Five ways to attract better clients using standout content with Martin Huntbadge. The In Search SEO podcast is brought to you by Rank Ranger, the all-in-one SEO platform that helps skill your business through data and analytics. Hey, it's David. What makes standout content in 2023? That's what we're talking about today with a man who helps companies find and retain better, higher paying clients who don't gobble up their time like Pac-Man. He and his wife, Lindsay, are authors of the best-selling book, Content Fortress. And he's also director of Jammy Digital, an award-winning content marketing agency for businesses that aren't afraid to stand out. I want to welcome to the In Search SEO podcast, Martin Huntbatch. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Really excited about this. Yeah, thanks so much for coming on, Martin. We can find Martin over at jammydigital.com. So, Martin, what does standout content mean to you? It's a really interesting one, actually. Standout online is a phrase that people use quite a lot. But when it comes to their content, you know, everybody's trying to pick the perfect brand, the best colors, the best style, the best fonts, the best taglines and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to producing content, everyone does the same thing. They just come up with the 10 best tips and the five ways to achieve this and things like that. And there is a very magical thing when it comes to uh, content in general, when you can apply the same principles to stand out as you would with a brand or with a logo or with, you know, your color scheme and actually have some personality with your content. And it's a, it's a combination of things, which we'll get into in the show, but essentially it's when someone lands on that piece of content, how easy is it to connect with you and gather that value and help you differentiate yourself compared to everyone else who produces content in your industry. So today you're sharing five ways to attract better clients using standout content, starting off with create content on your blog first. Absolutely. So the the blog, everybody, you know, the blogging has been around for a long time. And, um, and with the blog, you have a unique opportunity for you to combine those two things, which is creating really, really helpful in-depth content that allows you to educate, inform and stand out. But also it helps you to connect with people on a level that most people aren't. So the idea of setting up a blog for the first time in a competitive niche is like standing at the foot of Mount Everest because there's so many people that have been there and done it before you and how are you going to be able to achieve that? And by having personality and by creating content that, you know, it feels like you, it feels like if somebody was to jump on a call with you, a phone call, a Zoom call, or speak to you face to face, the excitement, the little intricacies of what excites you, what energizes you, what empowers you. If you can get that onto the content on your blog and because everybody loves to know, you know, they want to know before working with you how informed you are, how knowledgeable you are, but they also want to know that you're someone that they want to work with. And especially in the SEO industry, a lot of the companies that you'll stumble across will just be faceless companies. They won't have a personality necessarily. They'll just have some information. Maybe they've got some SEO content on there, uh, which is a term I actually really dislike. You know, content, as long as it's helpful, is fantastic. But a lot of the times in our industry, in content, in SEO and digital marketing, a lot of the times we think about, we just need better rankings. And and that's what blogging is used for, um, especially in the SEO industry. We actually find that it's incredibly powerful when it comes to attracting your ideal clients and also repelling your the clients who are not the right fit for you as well. So it's something that we've we really, really enjoy doing. And that's what we do for our clients. We loved it so much for our own business, we decided to start doing it. Uh, So you have to start with the blog first, and then you can move on to the various other things first. When you have that content first energy about your business, it can lead to a lot of successful, uh, you know, things. So I must talk to you about the AI elephant in the room, uh, because over the last six months or so, it seems like the ability to create content uh, on an automated basis has improved immensely. So is there a space in, in, in your mind for your clients to actually also utilize AI to generate content somewhere in the process? Or is human written content still best? 
So we love AI. So it might not be the answer you expected, but we absolutely love it. And we we kind of, we've run a few webinars on the impact of AI on, on content and how we're using it in our business. But before AI came along, there are a number of set stages within a content production machine, which is essentially what we have, you know, for our own business and for clients. There are various stages that all had to be done manually. Things like at the start of the process, uh, coming up with content ideas, maybe getting some alternative variations of words for keyword research, you know, all that kind of thing had to be done manually. The other thing that had to be done manually, obviously, is the written content. And then a, another part of creating content comes after that, which is, you know, how can I take this article and then repurpose it to be a LinkedIn carousel or a, a Twitter thread? And that takes a lot of time. So planning content and repurposing content takes a lot of time, not even mentioning the creation of the content. So how we're using it in our business is we're using it after we speak to clients, you know, with a kickoff call and we find out more about them. And whenever you've got a, a goal that you want to achieve, you need to have a planning stage and planning out content, even, I mean, two different planning methods, for instance, which AI really works well with is mapping out a series of articles or a series of pieces of content that you can create across three to six months, 12 months longer. You know, you can really use it to explore some content ideas that you might not have considered. But also when it comes to planning individual pieces of content and actually using it to structure the piece. So what are the H1, what's the H2s, what's the H3s? You can really use it effectively to, you know, brief writers and brief um, internal team members if they, they're struggling for content. And then we use it to take the content that we create and repurpose it, you know, two, three, four, 10 times over, because it's incredibly powerful when you feed it with the right content. There's a big problem right now, which is everybody's talking about how you frame AI and how you can imagine that you're a content writer. Imagine that you are a f personal trainer and this is becoming more and more topical. But actually, we just found that you'd never have to do that, especially with ChatGPT4. If you feed it with a unique piece of content that you've created and then, then get it to do what it's supposed to do in terms of repurposing, crafting an email to promote the content. There's so many various different ways that you can use AI, but if you want to use it in the most effective way, you have to feed it. Like imagine feeding it with a 2000 word article and then getting it to do some work rather than you trying to educate and come up with this lengthy prompt. Now, one thing we don't do is we don't use AI to create the content. So we use it to plan the content. We use it to repurpose it. We use it to even come up with ideas as to what images we could include. Like it's, it's fantastic. It's just incredible. But we still believe that creating content should be your responsibility or if you hire an agency, their responsibility in order to create something that matches your brand that matches the, you know, the level of quality and the authority that you have as an organization, as a personal brand, as a business owner, you know, it's important that you have the ability to differentiate yourself, both from a quality standpoint, but also from a originality standpoint. And I just don't think AI is there yet. Well, I'm glad we went down that rabbit hole because it certainly sounds like you've done a great deal of thought about it and uh, obviously how it impacts you and your clients' processes and Perhaps there's even another solo episode just in that um, particular topic. But let's uh, get on to the second step in your process, which is use the content on your blog to sell your services. Yeah, so this is one of the elements that we talk about in our book, Content Fortress. And it's the idea really is that when somebody lands on your website, they are at various different stages. We've all heard of the buying cycle, you know, what level of awareness are they? And um, obviously getting people to your website is one thing. And a lot of the times from an SEO perspective, you know, if we've got lots of clients who are managing lots of clients and they're looking at ways to give data and, and, and results to clients, they'll usually think about things like, this is your traffic number. This is how many rankings you've got. SEM Russia says you've got an extra 10% of keywords now ranking on high up and uh, the, the various stages, but it usually stops there. You know, we've done our part. We've generated um, traffic and, and maybe leads, but the reality is, is that clients and customers don't see a return on that investment until they get sales. So one of the pillars in the book is called sales content. 
sales content is imagine it's very, very bottom of the funnel. And you find that when we speak to people who maybe have an email list and they have a loyal fan base and maybe they've got a little bit of money to spend, quite often they can earn money quickly from creating very specific content that helps them sell their products and services. So we're not thinking about top of the funnel keywords and rankings and low hanging fruit just for the sake of you know, keyword rankings on the first page of Google. We're talking about how that business can make money by creating very specific, simple blog content. So as an example, a few examples, if you have a service or your clients have a service that sometimes requires a phone call or a conversation with their prospects, one of the pieces of content you can create is an everything you need to know post. So we've done this loads of times for all of our clients and for our business as well, which is when we launch a new product or service, we'll create a hybrid of what that phone call would be, where they might ask lots of questions. For instance, how much does it cost? How long does it take? Are there any pricing options available? Just like an informative FAQ post, but it's an everything you need to know about the product and service. You know that those questions need to be answered. You know that you're going to get asked them, but um, for the most part, businesses don't answer them on their website. They might have a small FAQ, which is why are you so cheap, you know, or how much does it cost? And then there's a short description that says we have to price accordingly and we have to learn about you. And it's not really a helpful FAQ. Whereas when you create a unique piece of content that's about your product and service, And you can say, how does this compare to this? You know, what are the different options available? And that becomes a very helpful, you know, it's kind of like a a very easy article to create. It's essential for your, your potential customers. And it also allows you to just be honest and transparent, which has so many other benefits as well as just educating them. Uh, And so much to the point that We now, uh, when we speak to clients before working with us, and our services aren't cheap, they cost over a thousand pound a month. But when we speak to clients, they don't need to take up much of our time at the beginning. Because, you know, as an example, we spoke to someone we'd never spoken to before yesterday on a 15 minute call, and they were in a position to sign up immediately because they'd consumed so much of our content. And that's one of the the pieces of content they consumed, which meant we didn't have to take up too much of our time, which meant we're able to onboard people so much sooner and get people, uh, you know, onto our systems and and just get started uh, sooner. So that's one example and everything you need to know post. And if you've got multiple services, you ideally want a piece like that for for each one. Other pieces of content, this is slightly more marketing-y, but it works incredibly well if you need to make money instantly. And this is a why we're increasing our prices uh, article. And it doesn't have to be an article, it could be a video or even a podcast if you have that kind of business and that would work. But a uh, an article that explains that you are about to increase your prices because of all of the extra services and all of the extra resources and all of the extra you know things included within the package when it when you started out you didn't have these things now you have these things which means you're going to increase the prices to accommodate. However, the prices aren't going up just yet, and if you sign up before this date, you'll still get the original price. And I can't tell you how effective that is in terms of generating sales now. Everybody who's on the fence jumps in. Everybody who's thinking about joining or thinking about having a conversation with you has that conversation, even if they don't sign up. Um, So there's a few examples. There's loads in the book, loads of examples of uh, sales content like that. But that's, again, very much bottom of the funnel content. Get people in with the SEO, but actually when they start to get in touch, Uh, you need a process. And this is the kind of uh, content that really helps people get over that finishing line. And step number three is use this to pre-qualify people before you speak to them. Yeah. So this is um, something we needed to implement out of necessity rather than, you know, a practical, like, what can we do? It was a way for you to deal with inquiries when they start to come in. If you're great at generating traffic and leads, then that's one thing, but actually you need a way to filter out these people from getting into your mind mental space and have a way for you to pre-qualify people. So content, for instance, about your processes, about how you work. You know, one of the pieces of content we created really early on when we built websites was our 31 step process that we use in order to 
build your website. And that's one example because that helps educate people that you do have a process and also they need to stick within your process. So it comes from a twofold. Um, it's really good because you can send it to people before you work with them and say, this is the exact process that we use in order to help you be, be successful. Content like things to consider before you work with us or before you hire a SEO agency would be an example. You know, you're not going to get results straight away. You, it does cost money because the process takes time and resources. You know, you could put all of that into content and help educate people and pre-qualify people. And it will help you repel the people that want those fast results that need you to get results now because they're on there. That's the final money and they're investing it all and they need results within a month. It's clearly not going to happen in most industries. So you may as well say it up front and rather than disappoint people, you've got a way to pre-qualify it. And we actually send that content to new inquiries when they come through. We actually say, oh, it's great that you want to talk to us. We'll book a call with you. Before we get to that, I need you to just look at these articles or these resources or this PDF that, that will help us have a much more productive conversation when we do speak. And at that point, if you've sent them information about pricing or processes and they're not the right fit, they'll probably just not book that call or cancel it if they've already booked it. Uh, really important that you send that to people before you speak to them to save you time. Yeah, it certainly sounds like we can get an individual podcast episode out of each of these points, Martin. And I'd love to drill <laughs> deeper, but hopefully there's an opportunity for a part two down the line. But let's 100%. move on to part four of this process of yours, and that's use this to help clients to the next stage. So what's the next stage? Yeah, so I mean, even when you, um, I mean, we spoke a little bit about it there, which is helping them to book a call, helping them at that point. The next thing really is helping them to be successful while working with you. So for instance, educating them on when they're going to get things. Um, the worst thing in the world is buyer's remorse, especially when someone's really excited. And if you're a good salesperson or you, you have an ineffective effective way with people, people quite often will sign up and want to work with you. And then after a week or two, they might start to question it. And that always happens when people make a big investment. So it's important that you keep people on track and that's why it's important that you do the process content and you actually list all of the individual steps that somebody would have to take and what you take. But communication is key. So for instance, we'll continue the web design example because I'm sure a lot of your listeners have built websites in the past. But when you have a website, there are various stages throughout the process. So after somebody works with you, you think that content journey has to end. But in reality... There's so much more work to do in terms of content. It's just getting the sale isn't the end. Helping the client be successful is the end. So what's the next step? Okay, it might be content production. You need to create some content and send it over to us so that we can actually you know, know what words is going on this new website. And the next step might be photographs. Or what photographs of your team? You need to send us photographs of your team. Or oh, by the way, I forgot to mention this before we started working together, but now you're just telling the client that they need this and I need this and I need this. And that's why it's so important that the communication is mapped out from start to finish. Um, and when you do that, you'll prevent buyer's remorse, but you'll also prevent what we like to call Trojan horse clients, which is they're super excited to get in, in touch with you. They're super excited to start working with you, but somewhere down the line, something goes wrong and they switch completely and they become the enemy, which is not something you want. They, they start to send you super long emails. They start to email you, contact you day and night. It becomes very difficult because we've not mapped out the process. And even if there is a mapped out process, we've not communicated it effectively so that they know what's coming next. And again, process content content and guiding content. If, if they want, um, you know, a copy of the book, I can, I can send you a link, but those are the pillars within the content fortress that would help you prevent that. I'm sure it happens a lot. It happens to us still now. So therefore we use those stories and those experiences in order to go and create a piece of content to solve that problem. And number five, use this content and repurpose it across all platforms. Absolutely. So not everybody will sit and read your blog before they get in touch. You know, some people might be connected on LinkedIn. They might have never visit, visited your website. Now, my wife, Lindsay, is, um, she's not here, so I can tell you she's incredible. I, yeah, I would tell her when she's here, but she is incredible at transforming content from a two, 3,000 word article into the perfect LinkedIn carousel, into the perfect email. And I think you need to do that because a lot of the times people are not actively looking for the products and services that you are offering. 
They're not going to be on your website at the exact time that you publish that everything you need to know post or how you can work with this post. So we need to take that content and distribute it. Using ChatGPT and as a tool will help you manage this. But essentially, every single one of our clients, when they get content created, they'll get an email, they'll get a LinkedIn post, they'll get uh, a potential Instagram carousel that they can use because we understand that standout content needs to stand out. And if it sits on your blog, it's not it's not going to stand out for everyone. So if you can take that content and create various different pieces of content from it with, you know, it's not the same piece of content. And I think that's probably a lot of people are aware of that now. It can't just be the same copy and paste content on all of the platforms. It needs to be platform specific. But when you have the core principles and you are ready to get people to your website in order to consume your content and want to work with you, you need to get them to the site first. So repurposing, it comes afterwards. It's number five because it comes after the content creation because you can use that alongside AI in order to create extra content. But in reality, that's usually the first step. Some people will connect with you on LinkedIn and they'll see content and then they'll go back to your website and they kind of reverse go through the process. Um, But without it, you're solely relying on SEO and solely relying on somebody Googling a service that you offer or a product that you sell. And then the website copy does it, does its work, but we need to get people there and we can't just rely on Google, um, unfortunately. And that wouldn't make you stand out if you were, because you'd just be one of the listings on, you know, the first page, hopefully you need that repurposing mentality. Uh, we call it, will it stretch? So this is a term that we use when we think about creating a unique piece of content, will it stretch? Can you create a piece of content that would be able to distribute it 10, 20 times over and still be helpful? And at that point, if it doesn't, then it might be worth going back to that piece of content. So it's important that you have that mindset when creating these content pieces. Let's finish off with the Pareto Pickle. So Pareto says that you can get 80% of your results from 20% of your efforts. What's one SEO activity that you would recommend that provides incredible results for modest levels of effort? Definitely sales content. So not just content. I think if we're going super deep, I would definitely say a sales content, which we've spoken about creating specific content that helps people over the finish line. And yeah, it's been super effective for us to generate sales immediately. As long as you share it with your email list, as long as you share it with your audience, it can be extremely powerful. I've been your host, David Bain. You can find Martin Huntbatch over at jammydigital.com. Martin, thanks so much for being on the In Search SEO podcast. Thanks so much for having me. I've loved it. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Rank Ranger platform over at rankranger.com.